Now, I'm going to start this way. It's been a big week in my life. Now, on Monday, I sat down and came up with some notes of things I wanted to say. And then yesterday, the club put me through three hours of media training. And they said, you've got to avoid the big statements. You've got to give a message to the supporters. You've got to give a message to the players. You've got to give a message to the board. You've got to look that way. Put your feet over there. Anyway, look, so I had to write a new speech. And then in the car, I thought, look, I can't really remember everything that the woman told me yesterday. And I figured that, that I got here doing it my way. So I'm just going to keep doing it my way. And then she can critique. First person I'm going to mention is actually not written on the sheet. Uh, Arthur, my girls love you already. Thank you very much. Good prediction. Now, Jimmy, you and I have a connection that you won't be aware of. And I th it's a really strong connection, and you need to thank me, but later. Unbeknownst to you, Jimmy, I had a massive part to play in your 91 best and fairest win. 20 years ago, a 20-year-old with blonde hair, it might have been a little bit tipped back then, spent the best part of 100 minutes trying to chase you around the MCG. Now, I had a quick look at the records during the week, and that best and fairest that you won, the, the count was really close. I think it was real, real close. The 20 year old chasing you around the MCG for the best part of 100 minutes. He tried, he had a crack. I probably punched you every now and then. You got two votes and you won the best and fairest by one. You owe me big time. <laughs> My first impression of this club. Uh, it's probably been an impression over six weeks. The people that selected me as coach did a very thorough job. I met a number of them, different board of directors, Cameron Schwab, Gary Lyon. They gave me three things, or I learnt three things from them. They did it their own way. It was a unique selection process. And no secret, I chatted to a couple of other clubs who did it their own way, and that's fine. Uh, when I went home with Sarah and discussed what was going on, she said, how'd you go? What are they like? I wrote down three words about the Melbourne people I'd met. This is prior to my appointment last week. They are the only club that I wrote the word passionate next to. The first time I met them was in Don McClarty's office. Don McClarty, Cameron Schwab and Gary Lyon. And in a two hour, many cups of coffee, Don McClarty punched the desk three times. Gary Lyon punched it five times. Cameron and I sat there wondering what the hell was going on. <laughs> they're a united bunch. I met heaps of them. And they're really keen to see the club prosper and be successful for a long period of time and they're committed to the cause. That's my first impression. I started at your footy club six o'clock last Friday night. Now the first impression I got of the staff was warm and welcoming, which is nice, really nice. That's not what I want from you boys. I don't want warm and I don't want welcoming. And you heard your president, and neither does he. That's not for you. I just thought I'd give you a snapshot of my week, my first week at our club. I've sent more text messages in the last seven days than I have in the last 40 years. I have smashed my phone cap 
It, and Cameron, you've got to pay for that. Thank you. I left home, which for me is or was Ocean Grove last Sunday morning to drive up and, and uh, go to Guy Jallon's house. I haven't been back to Ocean Grove yet. And for that, I'd like to thank Sarah, Lucy, Molly and Alice for putting up with that. But I promise I'll get home soon. Thank you. In that period of time, I've managed to get a new coaching structure endorsed by your board. We're doing everything we can on a daily basis to make sure that we can provide for the player group the strongest coaching group that we can get our hands on. There will be, at the Melbourne Football Club next year, eight full-time coaches, and that stack, stacks up very well with the best clubs going around. They're going to be coached really well. We've also managed to appoint, in my opinion, but backed up by statistics and a very strong CV. Not just a good head of sports science, but a world-class head of sports science. We're very fortunate to have David Misson on board. When I was told yesterday that I needed to avoid the big statements, my response was, you're six days late. I came out with last week, which I didn't realise was a big statement, but I've since been told every day since that it was, that I want to coach the hardest team to play against. Now, I'd class myself as fairly intelligent. I know that there are 17 other clubs and probably 2,100 journalists that have written that quote down and at some stage next season or the year after or the year after that, they want to throw it back in my face. Okay, that's fine. I'm a big one for aim high, set the benchmarks high, and actually go out with a plan to try and achieve it. I addressed the players for the first time today. I spoke about that with them. And boys, I'm gonna say the same thing I said to you this afternoon to the 900 people in the room. It's okay for your new senior coach to have that comment. I know what I've done and I know I've put it out there. I'm putting massive trust in you because you're the ones that can bring that big statement to fruition. You're the ones that can stop the 17 other clubs and the 2,100 journalists waiting for the day to throw it back at me. It's a lot of hard work to do. We're gonna aim very high and I'm gonna trust you to get the job done. Usually I'm not a massive one for too many words, but I did think that big statement required some explanation. Because words are great. How are we going to do it? Well, we're we going to do it in this way. David Misson and I, along with the rest of the coaching group, are going to provide our players with an elite level program. Boys, we require from you an elite level work ethic. You need to require from each other an elite level compliance to that program. Two messages for the player group. You deserve the break you're about to go on. I get that. Enjoy it. Put your feet up. And October 31st, get ready to come back 
and work bloody hard. Like I did this afternoon, but I clearly didn't do it clear enough. I got another message. This is for the players, they'll get it. That parting message I gave you, you are allowed to talk to my daughters. <laughs> I didn't say you couldn't go and introduce yourself to them. I just said, understand that they are my daughters, but you can speak to them, that is okay. I'm proud to be the senior coach of the Melbourne Footy Club and I look forward to what lays ahead. Thank you.